in today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys why you should stop blending everything. Blend the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel, Collectors. So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys and share with you guys about why blending isn't always the solution to everything in miniature painting. So if you listen well today, you might free yourself from blending hell. So chances are if you're a miniature painter and you're right here, you would have heard maybe you can improve the blends on that, maybe you can blend even smoother. This is something you will never hear the end of. Oh, the blend is not smooth enough. Oh, I like this work because it's blended really smoothly. Yes, blending is a skill and it's really difficult to do and it takes a lot of time. One eternity later. I'm not taking the credit away from many miniature painters who can blend really well and really smoothly. However, time is a luxury that I myself cannot afford. So in today's video, I hope you stick all the way to the end because I'm going to be sharing not just about blending but when to be blending. So today I'm going to talk extensively about my latest project which is the Incredible Hulk from Marvel Crisis Protocol. So if you look at the pictures of the Hulk that I recently painted, chances are you'll be very attracted to certain parts such as the face, the chest and the fist. These places tend to attract a lot of attention because these places are really high in contrast and they have a lot of dynamic colours in them and that tends to attract the gaze of the viewer. Additionally, naturally, the gaze of the viewer is attracted to the faces of miniatures. So you want to pay particular attention to these areas. So fundamentally, what inspired this video was my desire to understand the different types of shadow and how I can use that to create interesting contrast to attract the gaze of the viewer. As a miniature painter, I take a lot of inspiration from digital artists and how they portray the environment in 2D. In my opinion, this is extremely difficult because everything is portrayed on the same plane and there is hardly any references that you can use because everything is, well, defined by your own imagination and yeah, the lights and the shapes of the shadow can't be referenced accurately. However, as a miniature painter, it gets a little bit easier in 3D because we get to move the miniature around and we get to see how the shadows fall on the miniatures. One additional benefit for working in 3D is, well, you can use real life for reference. Sometimes what I do is I shine the light from the top and I look at where the light and shadow lands and that's where I place my lights and shadows, which is, uh, in my opinion, very, very accurate. And it's a huge advantage over working in 2D. This becomes a lot easier if you learn this special technique of how you can switch your brain off and start portraying shadows the way you actually see them. So in summary, shadows exist in three forms. So they exist namely in the hard edge, the soft edge, and the lost edge. So I understand if some of you are already confused right now, but stick all the way to the end because I'll be explaining the entire process in great detail. So first and foremost, lost edges. So if you're a miniature painter, chances are you already know what is a lost edge. If you have searched how to blend smoothly, how to create wet blends and all the other stuff, you are already trying to create a lost edge. So some of the kings of creating really awesome lost edges and the smoothest blends in these planets are Red F, look at that amazing blend all over the miniature, just insane. Now we have Land Studio, wow. More work from Land Studio. This dude is seriously the king of blending. And we have Mindwork Games creating really awesome textures right here. Essentially, in order to create a lost edge, you will need to have a very gradual transition in value, saturation, and color temperature in order to have a smooth transition. So this is more visible on the hub where I've started smoothing out the edges closer to the highlights so that the shapes of the highlights are less distinguishable. So how do you use lost edges? Lost edges tend to be form shadows and these are the things that will tell the viewer what shape the 
miniature is currently say for example the head is a sphere the chairs are two bigger spheres deltoids are spheres on the hawk alleys and these are the things that educate the viewer about the rough shape and form of the miniature so if this is the first time you are watching one of my videos this is something that i always stress upon which is values and values are really really important to educate the viewer of what they are looking at so after creating form shadows what do we need we're going into cast shadow territory now which is soft edges so if you look at some shadows, some shadows are fuzzy and some shadows are really sharp. This is caused by the type of light used and casting the shadow. So soft edges tend to come with diffuse light. With diffuse light, if you look at miniatures, you can roughly tell the shape of the transition. However, the transition tends to be a little bit more fuzzy. In soft edges, you can see some degree of value jump or color jump. However, it is fuzzy and it is not clear where this transition actually takes place. So how I tend to use these soft edges is I tend to transit this from the shadow color to the mid-tone color. That's where I use the soft edges. So if you check out the Hulk, this is where the magenta starts to transit into the green and that's where the soft edges are employed. So in the next stage, we're going to the face melting aspect of hard edges. So when miniature painters think about hard edges, their faces will start melting. Seriously. Miniature painting should be well blended. Why is there no transition here? So hard edges are employed where there are sharp edges where shadows are cast onto the miniature and there is directional light. This directional light causes the shadows to be greatly in focus and they form very hard edges. So hard edges are created when there's a distinct jump in value and color where there is no transition at all. Hard edges tend to be also the places where most attention is garnered because there's a huge contrast and you can see some hard edges on the house face. I also employed some hard edges onto the lower part where some of the lower shadows are actually cast shadows in the chest. So this hard shadow thing isn't groundbreaking at all. Uh, many awesome painters already use this. Banshee or Alfonso Giraldes also does this and you should check out his amazing work right here. Hard shadows give the miniature so much more form and it really makes this miniature look so much more contrasty. So yeah, why don't you just give some hard shadows a try right now. I'd like to point out some areas where I've done hard shadows on the hulk, the chest as I mentioned previously, and there's some cast shadows that I've done near the neck area, which if you observe closely, you can see the hard edges right there. Alright, so right here you can see that I'm going to be painting in the cast shadows. Right here I'm reinforcing the cast shadows so that the cast shadows have a hard edge over this fuzzy edge, the lost edge which I painted previously. So this refinement of the muscles here really increases the amount of contrast and makes the miniature look a lot more awesome. The same is done for the back right here. So now that I've shared all three forms of edges, why don't you put some different aging onto your miniature? Not everything needs to be a soft edge. Not everything needs to be well blended and smoothed out. You can employ these different tips and tricks into your miniature so that you don't need to blend every single edge. What you need to learn is how you can differentiate the different types of edges and when to employ blending. That saves you a lot of time. So in summary, remember the three different types of edges. Lost edge, soft edge and hard edge. So if you're watching all the way to now, you must have found this video somewhat useful or even entertaining. So if you could, Give me a like and subscribe if you think I deserve it because we produce videos pretty frequently and you don't want to miss any of them out, okay? This tells YouTube that our video is relevant and more people get to see this video too. So at this point of time, I'd like to thank my patrons for allowing me to do this. It's through their generous support and donations, I'm able to record and paint these videos so that we all get to become better miniature painters together. So why don't you head on to the Patreon now and support the channel by becoming a patron. The exclusive video for this series would be the unadulterated, super long, one and a half hour video of how I painted the Incredible Hulk. And you don't want to miss that, okay? So become a patron and I hope to see you in the next video. See you.